Hello everyone, it is so good to see you all here again. If you're new, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make Mexican meatloaf. I'm going to take a delicious meatloaf recipe, give it some delicious Mexican flavors. They're going to eat this one. You watch and see. Okay, y'all ready for this easy dinner idea? Let's go ahead and put this one together. Okay, we're going to start with a large bowl. I've got two pounds of ground beef just broken up into the bowl. I'm going to place half of an onion. We're just going to dice it up. I'm just going to dice it small. I'm going to add this to our ground beef. Now if you don't want to add diced onion, you can add some onion powder or minced onion that comes out of a jar. And just a couple of tablespoons of the minced onion or you can put in like a couple of teaspoons of the onion powder. Okay, now what we're gonna do is start adding those flavors that give it that Mexican flair. So what I have is one 10 ounce can of Rotel tomatoes. Now what that means is there's green chilies inside of the tomatoes here. Now I drained the juice out somewhat because we don't wanna make it too wet in there. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. Now if you have diced tomatoes in your pantry and then you have a can, a small can of diced green chilies, you can put those in here. Just drain some of the juice out. All right. I love corn in my Mexican dishes, so I'm going to go ahead and add some corn. I just drained the can here. This is, let's see, 11 ounces. I'm going to put about half of that into the dish here. Okay, next we're going to add some taco seasoning. I have three tablespoons of my homemade taco seasoning that I'm going to add. Now you can either do that or you can add one packet of taco seasoning that you get from your store, whatever flavor or brand that, that you like. I tend to make mine in a big jar like this and just keep it on hand. Oh, I'm almost out, so I'm going to have to make some new here. If you want my recipe for homemade taco seasoning that will give you a lot of batches, then I will link it down below in the description box. Or you can find it on my website, katherinesplates.com. Just type in homemade taco seasoning. Now I am using a mild flavor of Rotel. I've got some cheese here. I'm going to be using some Mexican style cheese. It's a blend of Monterey Jack cheese, cheddar cheese, queso, quesadilla, and asadero cheese. I'm going to be putting in one cup. All right, we're going to go ahead now and add two eggs. This will be the binder that will hold this all together. I still have one more ingredient to show you that's going to go in this. You're going to be surprised. There we go. All right, let me show you that next ingredient. Corn tortilla chips. Mm. When you have opened up a bag of those, they just smell so good. And they're like this, kind of like a triangle, crispy, mm. salty goodness. Now we're going to use this instead of breadcrumbs or panko crumbs like that. So what I'm going to do is just put it in a Ziploc bag. We want to make about one and a half cups of crushed tortilla chips. About two handfuls. 
We'll go with that and start with that. Just close the bag. Now we're going to rough crush these, okay? We don't want to crush them down into tiny little crumbs, okay? We want to still have a little texture inside of that meatloaf. This is the ones that I use right here. So let me know down in the description box which corn tortillas you like. All right, so I have them in my bag. I'm crushing them. Okay, that looks really good right here. Let's flatten these out for you to see. Let's just take my measuring cup and see how much we have here. Just a little over one and a half cups. This is a two cup, so we're going to use this right here. I'm going to pour this into our mixture. All right, we're going to dive into this and get this all mixed up. In the meantime, what I have ready before I do that is a sheet pan with a nice lip to it. And I've lined it with some parchment paper. I'm going to freeform the meatloaf once I get it all mixed together because it's pretty big. It's got a lot of stuff going on in there and it's not going to fit in my regular meatloaf pan. So you can either use two meatloaf pans or you can freeform it, which I like to do. So I'm gonna get my gloves on here, and then we're gonna start mixing up our Mexican meatloaf. Now those tortilla chips are gonna absorb the liquid in this meatloaf, and it's gonna make it nice and moist. Oh, it smells good. The flavors smell really good in here. Make sure you mix it up really well. Get down to the bottom, push the ground beef through to all the ingredients. So we're gonna form it as if we were putting it in a meatloaf pan. Just a couple of inches tall, maybe uh, one and a half inches tall to two inches. Because you want to cook it all the way through. And then just kind of pack it tight. That way it doesn't fall apart in the oven. That's it right there. Now it's very important that you use a pan if you're free forming that has a lip on it all the way around. That will keep any of the grease from the meatloaf from going down into your oven and it'll keep it in your pan. So just make sure you do that. Okay, we're ready to place this in our oven that's been preheating at 350 degrees. I'm gonna place it in there for about one hour. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna place some extra cheese on top, place it back in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes until this is cooked through. You can use a thermometer. You can even just kind of cut and peek, peek at it. Make sure it's not pink on the inside. All right, make sure that you are clicking the subscribe button if you are new to my channel and you're excited about many, many more dishes that I make. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, everyone. I will see you back when the meatloaf is done. There it is. Pulled it out of the oven. I had put cheese on top of it. Put it back in the oven for about 10 minutes to get nice and golden on the top and melty. Added a little bit of green to the top. You, know, you can add cilantro for the more Mexican flair or if you don't like cilantro, just put a little bit of parsley. Who's gonna know? Mm. <laughs> My husband's on the other side of the counter right now. Mm. excited for this one because you guys know he loves his meatloaf mm -hmm. and he loves it on a sandwich. Heck yeah, it might be a tortilla <laughs> on this one. All right, so I had let it rest in the pan for about 10 minutes and then I moved it onto a serving platter. So what we're going to do is cut in. Oh. 
I'm going to part for you. Oh, look at that. Let's go in for another piece here. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, he's giving you all his approval right now. I'm going to mm. slide this over the way y'all can see inside there. That finger looking good there. Okay. There you go. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yummy. All right. Y'all see that? There it is. All right, I'm going to put this on a plate. I'm going to give this a try for you. Okay, serve it with your favorite taco toppings. I've got sour cream, we've got some salsa, and then I like olives, of course, and then whatever else you want. There goes my bite. Mmm. There's still a little crunch from those tortillas in this meatloaf. That is very interesting. I love the flavor of it too. That is delicious. <laughs> My husband has already been nitpicking at this thing <laughs> as we're trying to get pictures, so you know it's good. All right, give me a thumbs up on this Mexican meatloaf. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. Y'all, comment. Tell me your favorite type of meatloaf. I will list a whole bunch of them down in my description box, or you can go to my catherinesplates.com and search meatloaves. I will see y'all on the next episode. Mm. Very moist.